Hi, my name is Dave and welcome to my wood shop. Today we're going to talk about bandsaw sleds. You never really hear much about a bandsaw sled and there's good reason, because of bandsaw drift. What that means is, when you go to cut a piece of wood on a bandsaw, it never really goes through straight. You have to do tests and if you Google uh, bandsaw drift, or if you go on YouTube and search for bandsaw drift, you'll see countless examples of how to set up a saw for drift. In essence, the wood's not going to go through straight. You have to do a sample cut and then you offset your fence in order to compensate for the drift. This is an exaggerated example of bandsaw drift. The test piece of wood was cut down the middle following a line part of the way down the board. If you'll notice, it's not parallel with the miter slot. What you would do at this point would be to take your fence and make it exactly parallel to the board. At this point you could cut straight boards. The problem is neither the fence nor the wood would be parallel to the miter slot. This is a problem. As we know, traditionally sleds on a table saw are all based on the miter slots being exactly parallel to the blade. So the same would have to be true for a bandsaw. Up till now a bandsaw sled was not possible. Now it is. A while back I came across a really great video on YouTube and it's a video by Alex Snodgrass of Carter Products and in it he explains how to eliminate bandsaw drift. Basically what he does is he sets up the blade on the saw differently than it's been traditionally done. Up till now traditional wisdom has told us to always center the bandsaw blade on the bandsaw wheel. If you look at this diagram you'll notice the bandsaw blade is in black. The bandsaw tires are represented by the blue lines. The red hash marks going down represent the exact center of the bandsaw wheel. The blade is centered exactly in the center of the wheel. This is what causes the bandsaw drift. In Alex Snodgrass's videos, he recommends a different setup. The blade is again in black, the bandsaw tires are in blue. And you can see the red hash mark going through, but this time you notice the blade is not centered on the wheel. Instead, the inside of the gullets are centered on the wheel. This is what eliminates the bandsaw drift. Before I demonstrate the bandsaw sled, first I'm going to prove to you how well the bandsaw drift has been eliminated on the saw. For today's demonstration, I'll be using a Powermatic 14-inch bandsaw, but this will work with any size or any manufacturer's bandsaw. My bandsaw is set up as per Alex Snodgrass's video, without any compensation for bandsaw drift. If you'll notice, the inside of the gullets of my blade are centered on the bandsaw wheel. You'll notice that my bandsaw miter gauge is set up exactly at 90 degrees. Once again, no compensation for bandsaw drift. My bandsaw fence is set up exactly parallel with the bandsaw table and the miter gauge slot. If you look closely at the edge, you'll see that it's exactly equal distant from the edge of the table all the way down. Now I'm going to make a 90 degree cut using the miter gauge. The board is placed on the flat surface with the freshly cut edge down. As you can see, it is a nice 90 degree cut. Now I'm going to rip a piece of wood using the fence, which as we said before is set up exactly parallel with the miter gauge. If you look at the thin piece of wood ripped from our stock, you notice that it's uniform thickness all the way through.
Now that we've established that a bandsaw can cut perfectly straight without any compensation for bandsaw drift, I can move on and demonstrate the bandsaw sled. Here's my bandsaw sled. Unlike a table saw sled, there's a single rail because of the single slot going down the bandsaw table. Table sits in the slot. The sled has a fence that's exactly perpendicular to the blade. I've also made a stop on the side of the sled that when it reaches the leveling mechanism of the sled, it will stop the sled and allow a small kerf to be cut into the wood to make sure that any cross cuts are completed. Let's make a few cuts and see how it works. With the stop in place, I'll demonstrate how you can make multiple cuts rapidly but very accurately. As you can see, all of our pieces were cut to a uniform size in a very short period of time. One of the main things I make are German smoking men. Most of the parts are made on the lathe. But if you notice, on the arms I need to get angles. These were cut using the bandsaw sled. I'll demonstrate how. The sled's very versatile. Within seconds it can be converted from a cross-cut sled into a miter sled. As you can see, I've added a second stop to the bandsaw sled fence. I've made these different templates for different angles. This particular one is 45 degrees. It gets wedged in between the stops, and then I can cut my dowel to a perfect 45 degree angle. As you can see, it's ready for glue up at a perfect 45 degree angle. You can make different size templates in order to achieve different angles as well. The construction of the sled is very traditional in nature. It's a single rail with a perpendicular fence and a couple of stops added. What makes the situation unique is the fact that the bandsaw must be set up to eliminate all drift. And as I demonstrated earlier, that's very possible. I hope you found this video helpful. Have fun in the shop and be safe. Thanks for watching.